Lakeview Westland Church, I want to invite you to stand with us today. We have a lot of guests joining us. Uh, it's the families of many of our VBS kids from this last week. And today we are celebrating those kids and the times that they had uh, during the last few weeks. So today we are going to give praise to our good Lord. Would you join me in singing about this good God? I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, and treasures that fail, never enough. And you came along. And you came along. Put me back together. Is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing. Beauty. 
praise this morning. Praise the Lord this morning. 
Hey, before you grab a seat, turn and either shake somebody's hand or give them a fist bump. Just let them know you're glad to see them here this morning. And once you've done that with a few people, you can grab a seat. We are so glad that you are here today at Lakeview Church. So thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. If this is your very first time with us here at Lakeview Church, we just want to say a very special welcome to you. We're so glad that you're here. And what we would love for you to do, if this is your first time here, is we would love for you to just share a little bit about yourself with us. And you can do that by completing what we call the communication card. And you can do that by simply taking out your phone right now. You can scan the QR code that's in the program that you received when you came in the door this morning. Or you can text the word WELCOME to 765-222-5937. Again, that number, 765-222-5937. Just text the word WELCOME to that number. You'll get a link sent back to you. Click that link, and then you can fill out the communication card. And just as our way of thanking you for doing that, we actually have a gift that we'd love to share with you this morning. So at the end of the service, you can visit our Welcome Center, which is right back there in the lobby, and we have a gift that we'd love to share with you this morning. So we want to encourage you to share your information with us and then pick up your gift on the way out. Now, if you're joining us online today, you can do the same thing. You felt the communication card, and you can't visit our Welcome Center because you're not here in the room, but we're going to get that gift to you later this week, and so we want to encourage you to share your information with us as well. Now, for those of you who are regular attenders here, you know uh, that we have two different ways to give, and I just want to remind you of those. You can give online, you can visit our website and do that there, or you can drop your offering in those two boxes that are right at the back of our sanctuary, and we would encourage you to do that. Now, today is a big, big day. Pastor Chris! Pastor Chris, is it time for Bible school? Uh... Uh, this is not Bible school. I think. Pastor Chris is supposed to be Bible school. No, it is not Bible school. What happened? Where's April? Where's the kids? You know what? To, to, I was just telling the people here who came for church that this is a big day. It is a big... I thought it was Bible school. It, it, it's not Bible school. Today is game six of the Stanley Cup finals. Wait a minute. Bible school should at least last as long as those... Uh hockey things because they never end. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. You're right about that. Um, th this actually isn't Vacation Bible School, though. This is, this is just our church service. Oh. But, but thanks for being here. I think I made a wrong turn at Albuquerque or something like that. <laughs> I thought it was Bible School. Where's April? It, uh, well, April's going to be in here in just a minute because here's the thing. Even though this isn't Bible School, we actually invited all the kids who were at Bible School to be here with us today. Are they coming back? They are coming back, and they're going to share with us some of the stuff that they learned this oh, week. Oh, that's good, because I was in the ocean, I had on like those goggle things, and then I was in like digging holes, and I was in a tent, and I was everywhere. I, I heard that you were like, had scuba gear on at some yeah. point this week, and, and then I, I saw you try to build a tent. I don't think that went yeah, very well, it, but... It, you know, I need to watch the video on that. I kind of missed the boat a little bit, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Well, well, the good news is, is that even if you thought you took a wrong turn because you thought you were coming to VBS, you're not in the wrong place because we are going to have a little taste oh, of VBS Oh, that's good because we learned like all kinds of good Bible stories about Jesus and how he gave his life for us. Bible school is awesome. I, I completely agree with you. And so I think we should maybe help the people here at church just see a little bit about what Vacation Bible School was about. But before we do that, I want to tell them just one little bit of why I think this is a really, really big day. Because Pastor Jared is getting slimed today. Oh, that's good. He'll need to take that monthly shower no matter what now. <laughs> That's exactly right. Pastor Jared, uh, just so you guys know how this works, every night at VBS, there were two baskets set up, and one of them had Miss April's picture, and one of them had Pastor Jared's picture, and then the kids would come in each night, and they would bring their offering, and by the way, our offering is going to help a, our global engagement fund, so they're actually giving to support a missions project uh, this whole week, and so all of the offering collected was for that, but the kids would come in, and it was fun for me to be here as kids were coming in because they would kind of talk trash to Pastor Jared. Oh, that's good. 
They, they would come in with their offering and they would say, hey, Pastor Jared, Pastor Jared. And they would wait till he was looking and then they would just like drop their offering in the basket with his picture on it. And so right after today's service, we're having a big party for everybody. It's gonna be a great time. And in that party, Pastor Jared is getting slimed. It and sounds so, like slime time, Pastor Chris. I'm excited about that. So here's the deal. Our kids are going to come in. They're going to share some of the stuff they learned at Vacation Bible School. They're going to share a couple of their songs with us this morning. We're so excited to have them. But as they're coming in to prepare uh, to do that for us, I want to direct your attention to the screen this morning so that you can learn a little bit more about our Vacation Bible School this past week. Good stuff. See ya.
there's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, emu, koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Flying fox, there's a croc, clownfish, the most wonderfully made is me. Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a wombat. What a great god, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a dingo. Oh, yeah. You know, we ain't just talking about another branch on the family tree. We're talking about a different tree. Uh, we're talking about trees. Thought we are talking about animals. Uh, animal trees. Just sing the song, mate. A bit faster this time. There's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, emu, koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Flying fox, there's a croc, clownfish, the most wonderfully made is me. Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made. Different than a wombat. What a great guy. made different. For example, have you ever heard a camel try and sing? No, but birds can sing. Fair point. Very repetitive lyrics though. Let's try it faster. There's a kangaroo, platypus, dingo, emu, koala up a tree. Wombat, numbat, cricket bat, red back, so many critters to see. Bandicoot, lorikeet, kookaburra, ha ha, brain coral living in the sea. Flying fox, there's a croc, clownfish, the most wonderfully made is me. Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made Different than a wombat What a great god, I'm so wonderfully made Different than a dingo Wonderfully made, I'm so wonderfully made Different than a wombat What a great god, I'm so wonderfully made Different than a dingo Oh
Dear Lord, I thank you for this day at church that we have to spend together as God's family. And I thank you for all of the blessings you have given to this church, including being part of VBS. And I pray these things in your name that they will be done again and again. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, can we thank them? Good job. Way to go. Way to go. Good job. Awesome. You guys did great. You guys, oh, I didn't break your hand. Come on. Ellie, good job. Good job. Way to go. All right. These kids are amazing, amazing kids. They've had so much fun this week. And here's the reality, guys. Uh, What we did this week is we taught these kids the Word of God, which we believe is the only foundation to build your life on. Right, Jesus himself said that people who don't build their lives on his teaching in his word, the house that they're building, it's like building a house on the sand. And when the storms of life come, that house gets washed away. But when you build your life on the teaching of God's word, you actually are building your life on the solid rock. And when the storms of life come, that house will endure. And so what we're doing in in a, a week like Vacation Bible School is we are just trying to invest in the lives of these young people because we believe that God created them in their mother's womb and that he formed them because he had a purpose for their lives. And we're just simply coming alongside of these kids in a week like VBS to say, how can we help these kids understand and know the word of God so that they can build their life upon that solid rock and find and fulfill their God-given purpose? And so a week like Vacation Bible School is a week where we as a church are seeking to make a difference, not just today or tomorrow, but 20 years from now. When these children are adults and they're stepping into positions of leadership and influence in our community, in our city, in our county, and in this world, we believe that investment in that generation really matters because it has the potential to change the world. And so I know we've already been wonderfully led in prayer this morning, but I want to just take an opportunity to pray one more time for our kids and for what happened during Vacation Bible School, for the commitments they made and the things that they learned, uh, so that we can just ask God to do his work in their lives as they continue to grow and mature in him. So can we pray together? God, we come before you in this moment right now, and we are so very grateful for Miss April and for all of the people who made Vacation Bible School possible this last week. Lord, we're grateful for every dream teamer who gave of their evenings to serve and those who gave of time even before this last week to get things ready and prepared. God, for every, every dream teamer who taught, who, who instructed, who kept order in these kids' lives during vacation Bible school, Lord, all of it came together to help these kids understand that they are fearfully and wonderfully made that they are your masterpiece and that you've created them for a purpose, just like you've created all of us for a purpose. God, I pray for every one of the 102 kids who came to VBS this week, I pray for their lives, that you would do your work in and through them. That God, for kids who made commitments to follow Jesus this week, would you help them learn more and more and more of what it means to follow Jesus so that with their lives they can live generously and they can make a difference for you. And God, for the scripture that they were taught this week, the memory verses and the things that they focused on out of scripture, would you continue to remind them of those truths over and over and over again so that they can build their lives on the solid foundation of your unchanging truth? God, we 
are reminded this morning that you are doing a work, not just in our lives as adults, but you are doing a work even in the youngest people in our church. And we are grateful. So God, today we give you our vacation Bible school and all that was invested and we just simply ask God that the labor of this week would not be in vain, but it would accomplish the purposes that you have intended and that you would be glorified and honored through it. God, we pray for the remainder of this service as Pastor Jared comes to share the word of God with us now. Would you anoint him and use him to share your truth with us? Because just like those kids, we need to build our lives on the solid foundation of your word. So would you use your servant this morning to share your truth with us? And would you open our ears so that we could hear what you want to say to us. We give you this time, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord from Jeremiah chapter 20, verses 1 through 9. Now Pashur, son of Immer, the priest in charge of the temple of the Lord, heard what Jeremiah was prophesying. So he arrested Jeremiah the prophet and had him whipped and put in stocks at the Benjamin gate of the Lord's temple. The next day, when Pashur finally released him, Jeremiah said, Pashur, the Lord has changed your name. From now on, you're going to be called the man who lives in terror. For this is what the Lord says. I'll send terror upon you and all your friends, and you will watch as they're slaughtered by the swords of the enemy. I will hand the people of Judah over to the king of Babylon. He will take them captive to Babylon or run them through with a sword. And I'll let your enemies plunder Jerusalem. All the famed treasures of the city, the precious jewels and gold and silver of your kings will be carried off to Babylon. As for you, Peshur, You and all your household will go as captives to Babylon. There you will die and be buried. You and all your friends to whom you prophesied that everything would be all right. Lord, you misled me and I allowed myself to be misled. You're stronger than I am and you overpowered me. Now I'm mocked every day. Everyone laughs at me. When I speak, the words burst out. Violence and destruction, I shout. So these messages from the Lord have made me a household joke. But if I say I'll never mention the name of the Lord or I'll speak his name, his words burn in my heart like a fire. It's like a fire in my bones. I'm worn out trying to hold it in. I can't do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it's my pleasure to bring your kids joy through my humiliation today of being slimed. Um, the best two reasons that I got that for I, why I deserve to be slimed are I'm bald and because my wife is pregnant. So, <laughs> anyway... All that being said, we'll look forward to that after the service. I'm not scared. I'm ready to do it, though. They seemed really like they were going to enjoy this, which made me wonder what they learned about all week. They learned about the value of life all week, and they're treating me like trash, (laughs) right? So all that being said, we're in the middle of a series called How About No? How about no? Because there are things in this life, in our walk with the Lord, that we would much rather say, how about no, Lord? I'd rather not. I don't really want to do that. I don't want to give that up. So last week, we talked about the specific plans that God has for each of our lives. He calls us each to a specific mission. He's set it aside before we were even born. So we talked about specific assignments last week. I want to talk about general assignments this week. Not everyone in the house cooks, but everyone needs to shut the door so dad doesn't whine about the thermostat, right? 
Not everyone mows the lawn, but everyone should change out the toilet paper when it's at the end. Please. Yes. (laughs) We all have specific jobs, but there are things that all of us are called to. We're not all called to be prophets, but I want to talk to you today about how we're all called to embrace God's unpopular truth. How we're all called to embrace God's unpopular truth. It feels good when the villain gets what's coming to them, right? When someone who deserves it gets put in their place. I still remember watching the whole Star Wars series with my wife for the first time, and we get to episode three when Anakin's just trying to turn into Darth Vader, and rage is boiling up behind Kayla's eyes as she said, he is such an idiot. (laughs) It's one of my greatest memories. We love when Thanos is defeated by Iron Man, when the bully gets in trouble at school, when your neighbor finally gets in trouble with the HOA. We love it, right? Because they deserve it. Well, I want to tell you about our God of justice, our God of playing fair. Jeremiah is sent to be a prophet to his own people to tell them that they're in the wrong to tell them that God is going to put them in their place. And so just before this passage that I just read to you, Jeremiah is tasked by God to go and get a jar. He has to go pick up a jar to use as a sermon illustration that he'll smash in front of people to show them that this is what God is going to do to you. Because you refused to listen to him. He goes from there to the temple, the most popular space in the nation, the epicenter. And he starts preaching similar things. And the chief priest, the head of the temple, just is there. He hears Jeremiah saying these things. And of course, he sounds like a nut job. What if someone just came in here and started screaming things? He's like, I got to put a silence, this Jeremiah guy. I've got to get him to stop. So he whips him. He puts him in stocks. And he lets him go. This is the thing, is that even after Jeremiah is punished, he still has bravery enough to pronounce judgment on Pashur, to talk trash to the guy that just beat him. So we find ourselves in this midst of this place where Pashur has rejected God's truth. He's convinced that the Lord isn't going to punish them, that Jeremiah, in fact, is the false prophet, and that everything is okay. The people of God are not disobeying God. We're doing the right thing. Jeremiah, shut up. Now, we're not all called to be prophets like Jeremiah, but we're all called to share the unpopular truth, to tell people when they're in the wrong. Pashur should have sided with Jeremiah. He should have shared Jeremiah's message with everybody else. Then maybe people would have repented. God sends Jeremiah to preach the truth because he doesn't want his people to live in a lie. He doesn't want his people to keep living evil lives. So if we're all tasked to share the unpopular truth, then what are we supposed to do? Just suit up and start telling everybody that they're wrong? Maybe it's time to get the bravery enough to tell dad that his jokes are subpar and his lawn striping is subpar? That mom's tuna surprise casserole is so surprisingly gross that the dog won't even eat it? But sometimes there are more realistic ones where you just want to put people in their place, that person at work that just gets under your skin, you want to tell them what's coming to them. And it's gratifying, isn't it? When you put them in their place, when they look like a sad puppy dog after that comment you just made about them. 
So sharing the truth is all about how it makes us feel, right? The gratification that we get out of it. Isn't it? Let's say you drive into a new town. You get pulled over for speeding. You get a ticket. There wasn't even any speed limit signs. You go over to your friend's house. You pet their dog. It bites you. He says, ah, that happens all the time. You go and you're coming to an intersection and an ambulance blasts through with no sirens, no lights. You slam on the brakes and knock over your Chinese takeout trying to stop. It stinks when you don't have a warning. But on the flip side, it also stinks when you have too much warning. It's, it, it's a little too much to listen to all the side effects that drugs have at the end of the commercial when they're playing them at two times speed, right? With the nice music in the background. Sometimes you have that overbearing person in your life that just wants you to wear a shower cap whenever you're riding in someone else's car because they're afraid you're going to get lice. Sometimes too much warning is annoying, but at the same time, you wouldn't want no warning. Why do you warn your kids not to touch the hot stove, what to do in a rip current? Why do you warn your friend about your dog who happens to bite? Why do you warn someone at all? Because when you genuinely warn someone, it's an act of love. When you genuinely warn someone, you care about their well-being. You want what is best for them. Because God could have just swooped in and destroyed his people without warning. He had every right to do so, and yet he doesn't. Warnings are meant to give us God's truth. They might be unpopular, but they help us to have a better picture of reality so that we can live the best lives possible, so that we can avoid pain, so we can avoid mistakes. And here's what really sticks out to me is that God knows the future. God knows that Jeremiah's ministry is not going to be fruitful in the sense that people are going to repent. And yet he still sends Jeremiah to warn them. That is how much it matters to him to waste an entire person's life in warning them that they're going the wrong way. And that was a worthy enough calling for God to set him apart for it before he was born. That's how much warnings matter to God. Even if you look back on all the warnings that you've ignored in life, what were the people trying to do for you? They were trying to love you. They were trying to care about you. God's warnings are a sign of his love. And sometimes when we read scripture and it can sound so negative and so punishment oriented that we're just, that God's just obsessed with punishment, that God is bloodthirsty, that he just wants to put us in our place. But listen to this from chapter 31 in Jeremiah. God says, is not Israel Still my son, my darling child, says the Lord. I often have to punish him, but I still love him. That's why I long for him and surely will have mercy on him. Would you say that punishment is the main idea of that verse or that God's love is? He has to punish. There has to be a consequence. There has to be standards. Otherwise, God is not a God of justice. But God is not obsessed with punishment. He's obsessed with his love for you. And that is why he warns us. No matter how much we irritate him, no matter how much your kids irritate you, 
They're still your kid. We're still his kid. We're still his creation. God cares so much about showing his love through warning that he pushes Jeremiah to a point where he feels like he's being tricked. I think that Jeremiah thinks that his ministry was going to be successful, that God's tricked him. Lord, they're not listening to me. And yet God still pushes him to do it over and over again to warn them, to show that he loves them. God warns us because he loves us. God warns us because he loves us. God tells us the truth because he loves us. And so from this particular story where we discover that we have to embrace the unpopular truth, there are two sides to the coin. I want to tell you about the first side. First, there's the person that needs to receive it. There's the person that needs to accept it. In this case, Pasher. The one that's in denial about the Lord's truth. The one that's in denial about the Lord's warning. That's in denial that he's in the wrong. But God's deepest desire is not to punish Pasher. Even though he says he will, that is not the heart of God. But at some point, the warnings run out. He gives us tons of warnings, but at some point, there has to be a line that cuts off. But God wants what is best for everyone. He wants what's best for Pasteur. He wants what's best for you. And that is why he warns us. But sometimes we get caught up in this lie that God is trying to rob me of something through his warning. God's trying to make me look bad. God's trying to take things out of my life that make me happy. I don't want to give that up. I don't want to do that. Lord, I'm going to do this for you and it's not going to make me happy. But the Lord isn't trying to rob us of a fulfilling life. He's trying to point us toward it. He wants us to say no to some things so we can say yes to the good things, to a life filled with joy and peace and love. That's how he created the world to be. And so accepting God's truth is not accepting God's reprimandation. It's not accepting God's punishment. It's accepting God's love. Accepting God's truth is accepting God's love. So here's the other side of the coin. You have the person that needs to accept the truth. You have the pasture, but you also have the person that needs to share the truth. The person that needs to share the unpopular message. The person that needs to share the warning. Even though Jeremiah has to preach destruction and punishment, he is not a messenger solely of that. He's a messenger of God's love. Even though sometimes the unpopular truth sounds harsh, it is always meant to be rooted in God's love. Sharing God's truth is sharing God's love. And I know it's a lot easier sometimes to share the truth when you're trying to make the person look bad, when you're trying to make them look like an idiot, when you're trying to be gratified in how you made yourself feel. But we should always be rooted in love because that's God's heart. Sharing God's truth is sharing God's love. So why was God so serious in his warnings to the Jews? To show how serious his love was. Why did he make Jeremiah do such crazy things? To show how crazy his love was. Why did he make Jeremiah endure so much rejection? To show how much rejection his love endures. And that is why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to share the truth in love. Not with a focus of punishment, with a focus of love. He warns us because he loves us. He sent his son so we could have life and have it to the full. But I know it's not always easy to heed the warning. It's not always easy to accept the truth. 
It's not always easy to share the truth. But the good news is that God loves us, so he warns us. He gives us a chance to accept it, and he gives us a chance to share it with others. So maybe there are those of you in this room who are like Jeremiah, feeling a burning in your bones. God's been telling you that you need to share this unpopular truth with someone in love. And you said, nah, I don't want to do that. I'm afraid of how they'll receive it. I'm afraid of how I might be rejected, might be made fun of, how it might ruin the relationship. But he keeps asking you to share this unpopular truth with someone in love. You see a brother or sister in Christ acting on Christ-like. You see them gossiping. You see them making goo-goo eyes at the waiter. You see them act like they know nothing about what Jesus has asked us to do. Or maybe you've been avoiding sharing God's truth with someone in your life who's never embraced it, who's never accepted Jesus Christ into their life. When you choose not to share the unpopular truth, you're choosing not to share love. It is not more loving to withhold the truth from someone you love. You tell them the truth. If you care for them, you want their life to be the best way that it can be. Warn those you love. Silence is not love. Or maybe you're Pesher. Maybe you need to accept God's truth. Maybe someone has come to warn you about something, to share the unpopular truth, but you've been in denial. I'm fine. I'm good. The Lord's not warning me. I'm not in the wrong. Have you been following the Lord from the while and you've been straying? You've been stuck in an addiction. Certain pictures on the internet. You've been talking to someone that you feel like loves you more than your spouse does. You've been engaging in unethical business practice. You've been treating people like trash. And you've just decided to ignore it over and over again. Or maybe you've never accepted the truth of God at all. But when you hear about a God who warns you because he loves you, not because he wants to punish you, not because he wants to get you in line so that we can all be robots that obey him, but because he loves you and wants what's best for you, maybe today's the day to accept the truth. Whichever situation that you're in, you need to know that the warnings that you share, the warnings that you accept, are God's love. God says no to some things in our life so that we can say yes to better better ones. Because God's truth is that your way of living is never going to be enough, but his way of living is always going to be enough. You're either a Jeremiah who needs to share the unpopular truth, or you're a Pasher who needs to accept the unpopular truth. So I'm going to invite Pastor Christian up for a time of response. And you should have received a three-by-five card as you walked in today. If not, you can raise your hand, and we'll have some people in the back kind of hand some out. It should be at the Welcome Center, Brian. But which are you? Are you a person that needs to accept the truth or share the truth? And so you're going to be able to write on this card in one of two ways. We're going to go into a time of music and time of reflection. Pastor Christian's going to lead us in that. But I just want to create space for you for the Spirit to speak. And I want you to write on this card in one of two ways. You can start the sentence with either I'm accepting or I'm sharing. I'm accepting or I'm sharing. And so this could be done in multiple ways. I'm accepting the truth that I need to love my wife better. I'm accepting the truth that I haven't been representing Christ well at work. I'm accepting the truth that I need to get over my addiction. Or 
I'm sharing with Jimmy the truth that God loves him. I'm going to share with Shauna the truth that anger is poisoning her ministry. I'm sharing with Pastor Jared that his sermons are too long. Whatever you think. But maybe you're in the room and you've never accepted God's truth for the first time in your life. I want you to just simply write on your card, I'm accepting God's truth for the first time. And I want to give you this extra challenge. If that's you, I want to encourage you to write your name and your phone number on that card. Not so that I can bring you out into the open in front of everybody, but so that I can connect with you and we can talk further about that. So which is it? Do you need to accept God's truth? Or has God put it on your heart? Has he put a fire within your bones to share an unpopular truth with someone and you've been avoiding it? You've been avoiding sharing God's warnings in love with another person. So as we go into this song, reflect on what the Spirit says to you. Do you need to share the truth or do you need to accept the truth? Let's go to the Lord. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory You're the only one who cares You turn mourning to dancing You give beauty for ashes You turn shame into glory You're the only one who cares. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Let's pray. Lord, when we embrace the unpopular truth, We choose to accept it for ourselves and to share it with others. To accept your love for each and every one of us and share it with others. Lord, I ask that you would give us the courage in this room to accept the truth for ourselves, to heed the warnings that you have laid on our heart and to have the courage to share the unpopular truth with others. Not so people can be scared, but so that more people can come to know the life-fulfilling awesomeness of you and what you want for us. So Lord, once again, I just ask that you would give us the grace to embrace the unpopular truth regardless of what people think. And may you have all the glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. So hold on to that card and drop it off in the offering boxes on your way out. Here's some more instructions. I'm accepting the truth that I'm getting slime soon. But 
You're gonna exit through the back, turn right, make sure you pick up your kids before you head to the party. And then for our regulars, everyone is invited. We just ask that you let our guests go first, okay? So all that being said, I'm gonna pray one more time to bless our meal, and then I'm gonna share some words of blessing as we send you out today. Lord, thank you for this opportunity for us to be able just to continue to worship your name, to celebrate the gift of life, to celebrate with our children. And we just ask, Lord, that you would bless this meal to our body, that you would bless this time of fellowship, and it would be a space where you can create memories for the future. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. May you embrace the unpopular truth so that you can come to find God's unfathomable love. You're sent out.